Hi guys and welcome to Student Database Management System developed in C++ using MySQL database. Okay guys, let me show you how this works. Right here, those are the details of uh, Daniel S.A. Roman. And um, if I go to Student Database right there, so you can see the details of Daniel is not right in there. So let's go back to the university student or university system now all we need to do to get the details of Daniel on board is just to click on add but let me show you guys one thing this is the database as well inside the database Daniel details is not there so I'm now going to just click on add there we go and the system is telling me it's successfully updated click on OK let's go into the spreadsheet here or data review as you can see Daniel's details is on board there that is it right there Daniel is a woman so if we scroll right down there we go those are all the information of Daniel so I'm going to go back to the university uh, system and let's click on reset to add more data so I'm going to click on that there we go so we're going to add more data I'm going to speed that up and get back to you guys and right there those are Charlie's details what I just need to add is guidance details let's say his uncle and the uncle they live in the same address okay that's fine the name of the uncle is Townsend as well let's just say it's James Townsend there telephone number of uncle Townsend so let's just enter all seven in there change one or two things around email number James Arts Gmail there we go right and that is the course that Charlie is taught him we can always change that course to whatever maybe computer system or information system and right there Charlie happens to be a home student he's not an overseas student we can change all of that accommodation no he's living at home and he's not an exchange student or is, is he on scholarship is in let's say third year and right here those are the grades of Charlie but let me show you guys one thing I'm going to select 15 as the date and if I click on result there we go that changed to 15 however supposing I have something like 617 then look at what is going to happen see it default back to zero saying is more than 100 okay so let's enter a proper value in there however if I dare move out of this cell now you see what happened and let's say it's empty the mouse leaves mouse enter then we can enter some value in there okay so let's just increase the grade that it's got and there click on results there we go is now a second class upper student now if we come in here student database click on that as you can see Charles details is now there all right so let's come right in here and what about the workbench itself inside the work or on the workbench Charlie's details is not there neither as you guys can see so I'm going to minimize that and let's come in here click on add there we go successfully added click on ok let's go straight into student database Charlie's details is now right there on the system now let's go back to the university system right in here in the database itself Charlie's details is not there so all we then need to do is just click on refresh even Daniel's details is not there as well so let's click on refresh you see Daniel's details and Charlie's details there Charlie and that is Daniel the one that I showed you guys earlier okay and that is how it works and I'll see you guys with a full tutorial shortly okay guys let's exit out and start a new project there 
I'm going to start by clicking on create new and right here inside Visual Studio 2019 make sure you select CLR MT project dot net framework if you can't see that you should be able to just come in here drop this down select C++ and you should be able to just scroll down and find your CLR dot net framework right here okay so I've already selected it that is it right here guys and that is it I'm going to select it and click on next now the configure your new project page is ready so I'm going to just give that name I'm going to call this CPP student my SQL all in lowercase so I'm just going to click on create now there we go right here guys that is my development environment however it's empty I'm going to click on the solution explorer right here if you can't find it just go to windows and you click on reset window layout if you click on that just click on yes and there we go that is my solution explorer now click on the property here you see this range or this icon here click on it and this dialog pops up now the first thing you guys should do is you see where we have configuration manager click on configuration manager make sure active solution platform that is 64 bit if your system is 64 bit my 64 bit and the debug part of it, the platform is 64 bit as well okay click on close now to your left we have configuration properties let's select linker drop it down and now select system once the system is selected right at the top to your right is sub system click on the subsystem and select windows subsystem windows done the next thing that you need to do next is select advanced right inside here to your right you will see entry point I'm going to make that just enter main right there just main type in main click on apply and then click on OK there that's the first step already taken care of the next step for you guys is to right click on your system the name of your system and let's select go to add new item click on new item the new item this dialog pops up inside this dialog you have two options either to select UI and the UI will give you window form to your right is create CLR form containing other window controls or you can just select CLR and select window forms create CLR form containing other window controls as well and right at the bottom is the form name dot H that's going to be the default name even if you select UI the default name is myform.h so I'm going to select CLR myform.h I'm not going to change that name I'm just going to click on add if you change the name just take note of it I'm going to click on add there and there we go my form is now ready however this is an error that's no problem Okay. if we double click on this myform.cpp this very one myform.cpp we're supposed to add a line of code some lines of codes here I'm going to make life easy for you guys let's go to the forum you see this very forum create C++ Windows form application in a uh, Visual Studio 2017 it works for this 2019 as well 
if I come right down you guys will see the steps how to inst install C++ and this is the step that I just gone through the CLR okay there we go every single steps select Windows subsystem Windows then the system and the advanced change it to main then uh, UI do I ended up using CLR no problem it's all the same and here this is where I am now with the arrow so these are the lines of code right below these very lines of code I'm going to highlight it and just copy that very lines of code the URL will be uh, we actually paste it inside my description area for you guys to have a look at this or copy that very lines of codes so come right down here the lines of code that I've copied I'm gonna paste it right here it's going to give me an error there we go that is the error the error is actually notifying me of the name it's telling me the name is invalid I'm now going to use the name of my own system known as CPP student MySQL so I'm going to enter CPP as soon as I type in CPP that is it right there double click on that and the error should disappear now there we go done my form is now going to be ready but before then I'm going to run it so that you guys see the form however I won't be able to see the form right here inside the solution explorer yet so let's click on run first there we go compiling and that is your form right there so I'm gonna close that very form if we go to the solution explorer the form is not there nothing is there so I'm gonna have to close this once I close this it's like me actually recompiling the whole program so let's close it and reopen it all over so close so open up the package again and that is it right here cpp student my sql there we go right there guys and that is your form now inside your header file or header files if I double click on the form we should be able to see the reform itself double click on it there and that is the form now I'm now going to select that very form and go straight to the properties and let's define the size of this very form let's go to size that is the size there I'm gonna make that 1000 plus 1300 and maybe 90s that's fine and the other one is the height I'm gonna make that about 800 press enter there we go now let me go straight to the tools here inside the toolbar I need tab control click on the tab control and just drag it that much it's coming up just drag it all the way okay I'm now going to change the details of this tab control click in here come straight to the properties drop that down and tab page one I'm going to change that to let's see the text the text should be there somewhere there we go so change the text to university system there and for top page number two I'm going to change that to student database right click on OK all done so the next thing I'm going to do is you see the back color I'm going to change the back color to cadet blue so I'm just going to type that in there cadet blue there now let's go straight to the toolbox again and I need a panel click that's the panel there just drag it how I want so that's that's fine take it up and this very panel that I've just pasted in there I'm going to change the back color to control 
so let's type in control there control is actually the default color like the form look look at the form the default I've just click on the form the default color is control so I'm going to change my panel to control paste that in there press enter there that is fine the other thing I would do is you see the back uh, the border style I'm going to change that to single you don't have to do any of this the choice is yours so now click on the panel hold on to your control make sure you hold on to your control your keyboard click and drag I've just copied one okay I'm going to repeat exactly the same thing now click and drag again and bring it right down there we go now I have two of those now I need one here so I'm going to have to actually add see this very one I'm going to move this one over here I'm going to need some space some room for the next one click and drag right there now the next thing is underneath here let's do as follows now just reduce this that much we're going to move this one up a little bit more and bring this right down here something like that take this up hold on to your control click and drag again okay now we need just one here underneath here for the buttons there we go that's, that's fine right looking is it's actually looking good taking shape then here this very one let's reduce it bring it right up all right that is the shape I intend or that's how I want my system to look like the next thing I'm going to do and scroll right down I think I do have month month and okay let's grab that month and months calendar I'm gonna go straight to the properties of that because I want to include the week or the weeks that's it show week numbers make that true and those are the week numbers now let's do one thing I'm going to copy this copy this I just paste it here there I will change the back color of that to cadet okay, blue there that is it and I will now copy and paste this in here that is how that's gonna look like now the next thing we want to do is let's go back to our toolbox we need a label just paste one label here and that very label I'm going to change the size of that label to about I'm just going to make it about 18 maybe 18 bold okay there and I will then add a border around that very label border style fix single and let's go to the text the text will be one there so let's just copy it across okay hold on to control control C copy and paste we have two so I need eight for the subjects we have four let's bring it down a little bit and we have eight now there we go guys all right that's fine so we need text box come back right here grab text box okay we're gonna need a combo box as well let's paste the text box here okay I'm going to change the size to about 18 as well make that 18 where is it right bring it down it's in bold there okay that's fine then we also need a combo box let's come in here and grab a combo box there we go let's drag maybe reduce the size of this a little bit 
have enough room for our combo box now make that combo box about 18 but I'm not going to just make it 18 regular there all right take it up a little bit so that is fine we now need to give them uh, names so come in here the combo box I'm going to change that to CBO CBO model one okay the combo box is called CBO model one and I'm going to need the for enter the following data into it so let's come into item where is item click on item so the very first item in there is going to be visual this is visual C++ programming there we go and followed by let's go for C sharp programming grab that oh wait a minute let's put a space in there there if that would be this would be number one well in that case that would be zero one two this is going to be C sharp and the next one let's say is going to be Python programming or shall we enter visual basic visual basic yeah visual basic dot net programming okay visual basic programming all right that is fine click on ok there okay now the text box this very text box I'm gonna give that text box a name and change that to txt score one there we go that is it done so I'm gonna bring this down just copy it across copy hold on to your control control click and drag we have two and we have four and finally there we go we have eight for eight subjects now underneath here I'm going to do one thing let's move this up a little bit take it right up I will have to rearrange everything properly so that I'll have enough room for and take all of these guys up as well there I need three items in here um, click hold on to the control click and drag there we go all right just move this up a bit and this other one move it up there we're gonna have to click more rooms for all all right these three items in there I'm gonna get rid of their border so let's see border none there and the text content on it and each one this is going to be known as total now let's get rid of that that will be known as total the next one pin this down the next one is going to be known as ranking then the last one that will be date there okay I want to have to copy another three or maybe we can even copy just this three and change things around hold on to, no let's copy okay let me make up my mind copy this ones now let's put a border around it single and the text content on it we have to get rid of those and at the same time let's change auto size I'm going to make that four so that I can resize it there so I'm going to resize everything now resize it all that's where I will display my data okay this one that is same center 
I am gonna change it to I don't want it center for now. Okay, now get rid of the text content on it. Delete. Delete this one as well. This there. And let's give it a name. So that's going to be known as LBL date. This is going to be known as LBL ranking. And this is going to be known as LBL total. Total. There we go. All done. Now for these ones. This one is CBO module 1. But before that, you see these ones? Let's just take care of those ones. That's easy. That's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now, this one is going to be known as CBO module 2. 2. And this is going to be known as txt score 2. And so on. That is it all done. So I'm now going to select it all. They all have a name now, as you can see, as uh, module 3 and so on up to module CBO module 8. And this one is TXT score 8. Okay, look at that. So I'm going to select it all now. Select the text box, come right down here. Where is the change the text content on there to zero? and it's going to be centered there okay that is fine at the same time we're going to select it all again and make sure is enable is false okay that's true now let's make sure it's false okay there we go that is it all done all right that is fine guys so the next thing we want to do now is Let's take care of these ones very quick, then uh, we can just move on. Okay, we need, okay, we need labels here. We need, let's grab one label. No, we're gonna need five there, or six, grab it. We need labels in there, we need about six of those here. There, and we will need five here underneath here five we will also need another five here let's copy there and here we need five combo box I'm not going to copy these ones because I have data in them so let's okay I can copy and just change it copy one dump it there right and go to the property Okay, what I want in there is going to be yes or no. Let's come to the item, grab the item, and just change that to no and yes. So those are the, just the values that will be in there. And the text content on it will be no. That will be the default value, no. So let's just copy that across. We have two there, three. Okay, move this up so that we have enough room for all of these. We need one more. Okay, and one more here. That's five. Now let's grab number up and down here where is it number up and down and the default value is zero so that's cool so change that to maybe 18 as well 18 regular and let's come right down here and get it centered align make that centered yeah and just copy that across we have two, four, and one more. 
there all right that is fine now we need some text box here no we need a combo box here grab one combo box up here the data in there will be different so this one is going to be select let's say select a course there and we now need we need text box grab one text box here and just drag get rid of the text content and change the alignment to left align there let's copy yeah and one more go back in there click drag okay that's looking good now I'm gonna grab all of these and just bring them here and let's reduce this there we go we need two more here there and the arrangement of this I'm gonna move this here that's fourth the fifth one here that should do that's going to be for the gender I move this one down put this here and this will be for gender item so that's going to be female or male ladies first there and get rid of the text content on there there and right underneath here that is going to be for my guidance uh, let's grab this we don't need that bring it here I will need about four, four or five okay yeah and move this up a little bit back in there one more time all right we need labels four six of those there we go one more okay that is it all done then the last part of it here is the let's grab the buttons we need to add some buttons right underneath here we need four of those one two four okay now if I run it this is how it's going to be looking like let's not save it first let's run right there guys this is how the whole interface is looking it looks very rough now so what I'm going to do is just change the names and name and name each of these components that's all I'm going to do and this very buttons as well so let's come in here now this very button select it all increase the font size to something a little bit readable there and this first one I'm going to change that to btn add new and the text content on it get rid of that the text content on it is going to be add so that's good enough add this is going to be known as reset and the name is btm reset this is going to be known as btm result Test content is result. Screw right down. Change that to result. And the last button we call that exit. There. Variable variable name btn exit. There we go. So I'm going to speed up the the modification of the whole interface and get back to you guys shortly. And there we go guys, all done.
okay looking much better so I'm going to run it there guys that is how it all looks now okay now guys what I am going to do is I'm going to exit out and let's work on embedding the my SQL so I'm going to go straight into the solution explorer here there once the solution explorer is opened you see right in here where we have reference right click on that and let's select add reference this very one there okay and once that opens up all you then need to do is you can come right here and just type in my SQL search for that okay let's check on recent okay that's the most recent one because I used it earlier then click on this check button and then it is for speech we're not working on speech so that's okay so let's click on OK but if you can't find it next time just click on browse click on OK there and that is it my SQL is now embedded onto the system or attached to the system alright then so I'm going to go into the code view of this system so let's click on form dots h and scroll right up there and what I want to do is you see where we have using namespace I want to import my SQL data dot client so I'm just going to copy that paste it right underneath space my SQL column column data column column my SQL client that is it right there enter semicolon that is it all done now you see right underneath where we have public reference class form I'm going to now create all my database connectors so I'm going to start by saying my SQL connection let's look for the one that says connection there we go okay then reference it to your own variable my variable in this case is SQL con that will be equals garbage collector new okay and that will be equals my SQL connection that is it I've just created an object there that is fine now the next one is you want to create that create one for command so I'm gonna come right down here let's just enter my SQL command there we go that is it right there and I'm gonna create a look up uh, create a variable that would be my SQL command cmd that will be equals garbage collector my sql command this very one so we'll grab that two so that is going to initiate the connectivity commands now the next one is going to be for my data table let's say data table grab that and I'll just call that SQLDT that will be equals garbage new data table
って。OK。That is done. We're missing exponential there. OK, that's it. That's what def defines it as an object. OK, the next one is I'm going to create one for the data adapter. OK. So my SQL data adapter and I'll just give that the name SQL data adapter equals GC and a data adapter my SQL let's enter exponential in there my SQL data adapter all right we also need to grab hold of the SQL reader as well okay and the data set so we might as well just do that now my SQL Uh, that will be data reader data reader there we go and I'm just gonna call that SQL RD there we go that's all that's going to be just a variable kind of then the next one is going to be data set and the data set is going to be as an object as well. Data set there. Okay. Well, let's give it a name. I'm just going to call it DS. There. That's it. Done. I will now declare a variable, a string variable that I'm going to use later on to query my system. So I'll call that SQL query. Let's enter exponential sign there. All right, all of that is done now. The next thing I'm going to do now is to add just three variables. One is going to be for the server the username, the password and the data database so I'm just gonna grab this okay so paste one two three and four so this is going to be for my server so let's change this one to server there we go and the server equals local local host there so that is done now the next one is going to be username the username is going to be the root there followed by password And the password, I'm just going to make that one, two, three, four, five. That's my password. There we go. And finally, the database. So I'm going to call that database. And the database, we're going to have to create a database. So that database that we want to create, let's just call it CPP student. student db okay that's the name of my database i'm just going to make that up cpp student database okay cpp student database doesn't exist yet all right however since we have declared everything we might as well go right underneath the pragma end region and just enter or create 
a function that will drive our database so I'm going to go right down here right underneath Pradma let's scroll right down right down here there we go okay right underneath here so I'm going to create my function there okay this very function let's call it private enter column there this is system column column void that should be uppercase void though uppercase void let's just call it student student upload there and let's correct this so then upload then we enter parenthesis in there so that's going to be the name of my function coming here there okay student upload that's my function there so inside this function all of those variables that were declared the first one is SQL can that will be dash connection connection string actually and the connection string is going to be server okay and it's going to be equals server that's plus server again there we go plus the next one is going to be first of all let's enter speech marks and equal on there now the next one is going to be username let's say that will be plus username equals so this username let's put that in a quote that is the username is in a quote then I'm just gonna enter plus username itself and let's enter speech mark column plus let's take that down the next one is going to be password password equals password plus password plus there plus the next one now is going to then be the database database and this database is going to be database as well enter a plus here paste the database there and end it with semicolon there okay now let's get it opened so this connector we want it to open up something for us to open up the database though the database is not ready yet if you guys can still recall so let's just say SQL connection that will be open there then the command SQL command that will be equals dash command text right that's good and this command text you know it's not command text really okay it is yeah that's that will open command so let's say xql command okay that will be connection equals this connection 
that to be equals SQL now SQL command that is where we enter our SQL statement so I'm going to say select from now the name of my database that I haven't created I think I call it CPP student DB so let's confirm that very name scroll right up there we go that is a CPP student DB okay that is my database this database is not created yet okay so let's make sure it's correct CPP student DB yeah all right so that is it enter a semicolon there to end that now we want to get the SQL reader to be equals the command and get it executed so let's say SQL read that will be equals SQL command dot okay execute read execute reader there we go and enter semicolon there no not that to be that is wrong get rid of that execute reader yeah that is correct now now SQL database SQL DT data table we want you to load load the SQL reader bring that up so that you can see it and get the reader within it okay reader yeah within the parentheses there we go now that that is done we now have to close this reader and we will also have to close the connector up there so close reader dash close and we close the connector as well so grab this and just type in sql con there that is that done okay that's one thing that uh, we may I may have not shown to you guys and that is just supposed to be an ordinary data review so say SQL data data review data review one that would be dash data source and the data source equals SQL DT there we go and that is all there is to the function the function is created this function I'm going to invoke this function inside using form load so let's come right here go to design right here inside the design before I double click on the form let me show you guys student database that is just my that is the data grid view that I was talking about I should have shown it to you guys it's just an ordinary data grid view all you need to do is go to tools and just grab it right there and just drag it how you want it that's the data grid view okay now let's go back into the form so to make sure I click on the form that is the form double click on the form and now I want to come right down here and just enter my function end it with semicolon so I've just called this very function like I said earlier my table or my database is not created yet that's the name of the database I'm going to copy that very name now let's open up my SQL workbench 
inside the workbench let's click on schema this very one and let's give it a name so the name of the database is CPP student DB I'm now going to click on apply click on apply again there and click on finish so let's look for CPP student DB that I've just created this is that is it right here okay and then click on the table inside the table all we then need to do, do is select create table and there we go I'm going to give it a name again paste that same name CPP student DB now you see this double head arrow drop it down and right in here column name the first one I'm just going to call it student ID okay we can use uppercase let's say student ID in there there all right that's fine now let's select the primary key and make sure it's unique value and it must not be empty now the next field or column is going to be first name I'm going to leave that as Vasha 45 followed by surname address underneath here and right underneath I'm going to enter gender here DOB next that will be mobile and underneath the mobile will be email there so I've more or less taken care of this the first column there okay let's take care of the other one that is going to be course and underneath the course will be course course code after course code we have home student and then we have overseas student okay that's fine and then we have accommodation Here. then we have exchange exchange student we just leave that as exchange then we have scholarship there we go there that is fine now the next one that we going to add will be B A B S C that's the different types of degree M A M S C and P H D good in total I should have four I should have thirty nine of those so followed by model one model two Model three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight models, so that's complete. Now we then need the score. There are eight scores, so we need a score number one, score two, score three, score four, score five, score six, score seven and score 8 there we go man so the next one we want to do now is total score after that ranking and after the ranking date I think we've more or less finished the table 
or the database so let's click on apply I should have 39 so with this very one that shows the table SQL create SQL so take it down up to that is correct I have 39 so I'm gonna click on apply and click on finish and that's all there is to it my SQL table is now completed so if we double click on that and we should be able to see our table there so that is fine I'm going to minimize that okay I can now go straight into my system and let's try it out though nothing will happen okay but if there's no error that means all is well okay guys let's click on build then we run it and see although we won't be able to see anything inside the database but at least the data grid view should show the headings so let's click on run if the headings are shown on the data grid view then the system is working fine with my database very good there's no error so let's check out the data grid view there we go those are the fields or the columns on my database there we go guys look at them every single column is right here 39 of them that is it right here okay so that is fine so now let's check out the odd okay so let's take care of the ad if the ad works we should be able to add enter data in there and just click on add and that's it so i'm going to exit out now and let's double click on add button scroll right down double click on the add button there we go so to make life easy for me i'm going to go up here and just grab this let's grab that up to here that's fine let's grab all of those come right down this is my odd events so paste that in there and maybe I might as well just enter try in here so come right here let's say try if there's any error is that would be very very handy for the try function so let's grab this connector that's asking the system to open up and we'll try let's end it here and let's say cache and that will be exception ex come right down here there and let's enter a message in there so I'm gonna say message box column column show ex dash message so if there's any error this we actually handles it there now let's go back inside try right here so inside try the first thing I want to do is for the connector to open up the database then I'm going to then use my SQL query that I declared separately okay using a string character and I'll say string data type I mean insert into CPP student DB okay that is the name of my database the following so the following will include all of the above student ID comma first name you guys can still recall those are my table those are the columns of my table surname address gender I have DOB mobile comma email 
corner let's come down here and just enter let's say course comma course code yep that's good home student overseas student looking good and we have accommodation then we have exchange comma scholarship and we then have BA comma BSC comma let's close that press enter MA MSC comma PhD now we have modules model model one so let's copy this model first there one comma model two model three model four model five six seven and eight there we go all the modules are in place let's put a comma and a speech mark plus press enter the next one is going to be score score one so let's copy this score copy comma score two three four five six seven and score number eight there we go score eight so all of the score are in place as well then the next one is going to be total score total score comma followed by ranking comma and date all right that is it all done so we now need the values for the values we then enter value equals as follows do that again okay the very first value that is txt student id there dash to text that's my very first value and we just say plus speech back prostrophe there should be a comma in there plus the next one is going to be first name no yeah first name txt first name grab all of these again and just paste it here followed by surnames txt surname a surname dash text so we're missing dash text here as well okay so that is fine so I should have just copied all of this like this there we go copy we have so up to so name okay so now let's go for the next one let's put this one here 
paste. Okay. Now let's go to the next line. That will be address. TXE address. Grab all of these and just paste it there. That is for address. Okay, guys. So all I'm doing is just calling every single data that I have on my system. I'm now calling them individually by name. The next one after address is gender. So I can grab all of these and just change that to gender. In the case of gender, that is CBO. CBO, gender. The next one is date of birth. Date of birth. And we have, after that, we have mobile. You can paste that in there. Mobile, change this one to mobile. Okay, and so on, guys. So I'm going to speed that up. And there we go, guys. All done. Okay, and there. That's where the command gets it all executed. Take it down so that you guys can see it. So that is the add button taken care of. All right. Okay. Take a good look at it from the top. Take it from the top. Okay, that is my add button. Bring it right down. And this is where I've called I call every single column. And those are the components I have on my phone. Okay, adding the values in there. And here getting it connected and close up the database itself after execution or after executing the reader. So here if there's any error, that is the error handler. And finally, if everything goes well, close the database and display this message. Then invoke the function that we created earlier. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to save that. Let's compile and run just to give it a try. Make sure it works. First step is done. There is no error. One successful. So let's click on run. There. Now I'm going to enter some data in here. So the first is going to be, let's say, the number, student ID number is 555 five, 432 five, 555432 five, 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 and the name of these very students I want to call him Tony Montana and right underneath here address number 17 Little Venice Avenue there. Gender is male. And address, let's say, it was born 17, 7, 19. There we go. Telephone number. And it's email. Tony Montana at gmail.com. So let me just speed up adding all the data. There. So I've populated most of all. So I'm just going to drop this down. It's at home students. And that's it. And in here, let's assume it's uh, BSC. And here, it's in final year or third year. Just enter the units that is taken in there. Um, because the score area is all disabled, the size will remain. And 1, 2, and 3 will not show any data. So let's see. Check how the database itself. 
okay the data review there's nothing in there and there is nothing of the student tool in Montana here hopefully if the odd function works click on that there we go it's working so click on ok let's come in here and that is the details of Toad in Montana and like I said there's nothing in here in those three cells and let's go straight into the, our database that is the workbench itself nothing yet if I click on refresh there we go look at that guys or oh, the connector is working so the add function is out of the way that's good all right guys now let's take care of the exit since the add is working so I'm going to click on exit there and right here let's double click on the exit there press enter now I'm going to start by entering as follows let's say this is system system windows okay system windows column column form that could be forms and that is going to be dialogue results okay and I'm gonna call that I exit there that is my variable declared so I exit is going to take in the following message box message box column column show as follows and what I want you to show is just going to be confirmed if you confirm if you want to exit so that would be my first argument the second argument is I'm gonna make that the title so that's gonna be student management system there so let's correct this there we go that's second argument and enter a command there the next argument is going to be message box buttons okay column column yes or no comma finally the fourth argument will be message box icon so we can select either yes no question mark I'm going to select a question mark and end it now use an if statement if I exit equals equals system dialog yes grab all of this system column column windows column column forms column column dialog column column yes open up your curly braces then in that case application column column exit there so we've just taken care of our exits take a good look at the lines of code for exit yes you can always use this but it's more professional for you to prompt the user to confirm if they want to exit or not so let's run that run there we go guys click on the exit there no I don't want to exit yes I do want to exit so those are my four arguments the title the question mark my statement confirm if you want to exit and message box buttons so if I say no I remain within the system but if I say yes I will exit out of the system 
okay guys now let's take care of the course column so let's go to the design view so right here on the design view I'm going to select course and let me show you guys what I'm talking about go to the properties so right here let's click on item there those are the courses that we're talking about in total we have about seven yeah okay now what will happen is when an end user select one of the course that will populate the rest of the text box there so let's double click on that double click on the combo box and we're going to use conditional statement here so let's say if cbo calls if the text content on it is equals equals to nothing in that case do not populate all of this text box so the first one that is not to be populated will be the course code CBO course code no TXT course code let's add a code in there there and it's going to be followed by txt faculty that will now be populated as well txt dean that's dean of faculty txt program leader not populated as well and txt course tutor there oh, get rid of that we meant to actually change this to single equals alright let's grab this is that here and here as well there that is my very first statement taken care of else so else if it's if it contains something so grab that and just come right down here change that to else if if it contains let's say serious games that is if equals equals serious games yeah so bsc serious games there in that case the course code will be as follows and faculty let's say school of computer games right and Dean of Faculty that's going to be Professor Danny Danson as Dean of Faculty Danson then program leader that is Dr. Femi Wells and course leader let's say Dr. Sami South End there that is my second condition taken care of so let's copy this paste that in here and if the course selected happens to be computer games the serious games as computer games so it's going to be almost the same in this case but 
here let's say we have Felix Laurentin there they will that is the only bit that is different there and the course code will be different there now the next one let's do one more let's say we have computer science I'm gonna grab this and paste it right underneath there in this case that is BSc in computer science and change that to computer science course code and the school is going to be school of computer science or school of computing all right this is the school of computing there and the professor here is Peter Parker then we have Dr. John let's say John Johnson or let's say Johnny Johnson there yeah. and Cross leader Sh Shelly or Sally Kings. Right. Okay, I have more condition, four more conditions to go. I have three there with this one. So let's just speed that up. I'm going to copy and just paste that in there and change it around. Okay, all done. Now let's run it and see how that's going to look like. So I'm going to save, click on build the solution, and then we click on run. Okay, decision time. Let's come in here. There we go. All right, that's working fine. Okay, let's try this oh no all right let's see what did i do wrong here i'm going to exit out oh look at that i left it empty that should have been select select a course so if you select a course all of this should be cleared so run that again okay guys so i'm going to now try that out and let's select the course there so that is how i expected it to work all right the next thing i want to do is you see each of these when i select this i want it to enable controls here enable them individually okay maybe we should even put a board around it all right so let's end that i'm going to go to the form now before I continue, I'm going to select every single one of these and I just put the border around it, make it look a little bit pronounced. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, double click on the very first one. Okay, right in here. I'm going to use as follows. Let's say if. CBO model one dot text if is equals nothing then I want as follows TXC score one dot text the value will be zero there and enable that is going to be false 
enable that to be false equals there we go else enable will come true clear the text content and so on so grab this enable equals true then text equals clear let's clear the text in there for now and we also want to set focus or focus there we go and let's just enter focus there there yeah, that is it parenthesis there we go that is it done so I can just copy this and change it for the others but first of all let's try this out before we change it for the others run okay try this out there we go so one other thing is supposing my mouse leaves so I'm going to use mouse leaves for that so that is fine there nothing something okay that's cool so end that and let's go back to the design and double click on the next one or the second one paste that in here that's module 2 so all of this will be changed to 2 and the text box will be 2 as well there we go so we'll repeat the same thing for number 3 I will click on number three and paste that in there. So this is three, model three. There. Okay, model number four. Double click on number four. Paste that in there and change the name to model 4 txt score 4. There we go. And we need to do the same thing for number 5 as well. Double click on number 5 and press enter. Paste that in there and change this to 5 there we go number six double click on number six and paste changes to six there seven double click on seven paste that in there and change that to seven 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 Now take care of the last one, number eight. Scroll right down, grab number eight, double click on that, and paste. All right, that is all done. That is fine. So let's try that out now. Click on run. Okay. So try that out. You see that, guys? That is fine. that is fine I like that all right but supposing we don't enter anything in there I want the system to default back to zero so we come back in here so let's grab all of the text box select it all go straight to the property and I'm going to change the event to 
let's call that mouse leaves where is it event mouse leave leave there we go so I'm just go, going to call it M leave M leaves press enter okay I will now create an object there so the object text let it reference C and that is going to be safe underscore cost less than the text box and let it reference sender and enter sender in there close that there now my object is created I think we should enter semicolon in there object created so we now need to check if this using an if statement if it's empty or not so let's say if c dash text equals equals nothing then we want the system to change back to zero so we're gonna say c dash text should the fourth back to zero so that should take care of the errors okay that should take care of that so let's run it and see run okay enter data in there and that's it if I did move out of there back to zero see that and this other one as well so what if I enter value in there that's fine next one all right i guess you guys get the whole idea so that is fine and this is fine as well okay why are it let's take care of this then we'll come to this these two are already taken care of let's take care of reset so that i can reset it all all right exit yes so with the reset double click on the reset button there we go and let's start by entering as follows txt student id dash text that is equals let me show you guys one method string equals equals empty that is one method okay there and another method is txt first name dash text equals there that is one other easy method okay guys you can use any kind of method you want the next one is surname let's go for surname dash text equals string equals equals yeah oh there's something missing here equals equals empty there then let's take a care of another one that will be the address and so on dash text equals and I'm just gonna speed that up now And there so that is it all taken care of guys okay bring bring it down so that you guys can see it there 
right that is my reset taken care of take it from the top again bring it down good all right so let's run that and try out the reset all right so let's just enter whatever data in here okay let's change this there click on reset there we go okay but these ones they did not change let's see if this one will not change as well okay they did not change they were meant to default back to no all right what is their name i think they, those are combo box so let's see cbo yeah they are combo box students whatever that will be no and the text content should be no that's good so we have four more of those to do then the next one cbo overseas students paste cbo accommodation CBO exchange undo that copy and paste and one more CPO scholarship there so that is that taken care of all right that's fine and save that okay the other thing we want to do now is let's take care of the calculations so let's come in here now with the calculation we double click on the result and I am going to declare an array in there so take it up so the array I'm gonna call it the data type is int now just call it unit 9 all right the very first array always starts from zero but let's use try cash here just in case if we run into any problem and right underneath let's say cash exception x there and that will be message box message box and use a method called show and show what show the following message that will be ex dash message so if there's any problem C++ will generate an error message for me instead of giving me an error so that's fine so let's come in here so the very first array that I'm going to declare in there is going to be or the very first array that I will use will be zero array always start from zero so that is zero and zero array unit zero equals convert we have to convert the, the data inside the text box to an integer because the array is int so let's say int 32 and where is the data is from txt score one dash text because the data inside the text box is string character so we have to convert it to an integer there what I just do now is copy and paste for the rest we have four let's copy this again 
in total because there are eight paste that in there and just change the numbers around so this one will be two seven and eight array always start from zero so this one is one two three seven now let's add all of these data together so I'm going to before adding it let's do one thing first so right underneath here that would be 8 and 8 equals the following taking all of this value and that's going to be 0 plus unit 1 5 6 and seven so that completed all get rid of this there okay that is fine however supposing the end user should enter any value greater than 100 i can always check that out here let's check that out here so let's use an if statement if number one number zero is greater than 100 okay if it's greater than 100 come down here paste in that case we want score one dash text to default back to zero And there that is it that's all okay so I'm gonna copy that for the others copy paste 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 and this one is zero this one is one this one is two three and this one is one so this is two three Okay, and just let's add another four to make it eight. And here is three, this is four, five here, six, and seven. So this will be text box number five six seven and eight there we go all done there okay so that is it that is the validator or the validation taken care of now one other thing is after the calculation okay i want something that will tell us the score and so on so underneath here i'm going to say lbl total okay lbl total equals whatever total score dash text that will be equals we also need to get it converted to convert column column to string character to string and what are we converting to string we are actually converting this to string paste and there we go that is fine this should be there okay now let's use an if statement to check whatever the score is if array number eight 
is greater than and equals to 700. Then, LDL ranking dash text that will be equals as follows. So we can just call that first class. There we go. Done. Copy that. And let's use else if there. Else if. If it's 600, that would be second class or second class. And if it's 500, greater than 500, 500 and greater than 500, that will be second, second class lower. You can see double I there, that is how it's written. Now, let's go for 400, 300 and so on. So come right down here that should be else if let's see do we have else if here yes we do copy that paste if it's 400 that's a third class third class there get rid of that All right. Close that properly. Okay. The next one is, let's see, why am I having, okay, that's good. The next one is third class. No, third class is taken care of. The next one will be 300 let's say greater than and equals to 300 that will be certificate of higher education there we go and if it's less than 300 that will be a fail so let's come in and just enter less than 300 There, that would be a fail too bad that is it taken care of and finally underneath here let's say LDL dates let's say date that text equals whatever we have inside month there we go month dash select that will be selection stats where is it there we go selection stats dot to long date string double click on that enter that there we go all right uh, supposing we can grab after all the validation maybe I should grab all of these my total everything bring it right down here and let's see how that's gonna work there okay so let's run it have a good look at it that's my lines a uh, line of code or lines of code for the results checking if there's zero if it's greater than 100 and so on that is we have added all the values together oh this should be 7 look at that 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that's good and that is it and this is where I add enter all the total so let's run it run okay let's try that out guys so enter some data in here I'm going to go over 100 there mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. Click on results. There we go. Look at that. It refuses those. So let's enter the correct value in there. You see, when the mouse click on it, I expect something to happen. So let's enter some value in there and just change that around. There we go. Look at that. Okay, that is fine. All right. All of the buttons now works as expected. So one other thing I'd like to do is you see if I click on add, if I click on this, I want every single data added here. So these data that I have in here, I can even populate it. Let's just enter whatever in there and save it straight into my student or whatever. It's an exchange overseas student on an exchange program in second year and that's the student details there all right so let's just speed that up a name the name for this student Felix Sanmo let's speed up okay we have the details of Felix Sanmo so all we then need to do is to add it straight into or onto the data grid view and to the to my SQL workbench as well. So let's minimize that. So I'm gonna click on add. There we go. And click on OK. So let's come right down here. We have Felix there. And if we come right to the database itself we have to refresh to see Felix details so click on refresh that is it that's Felix details there that is fine minimize that but I want to try and achieve one thing if I double click on this let's assume all of this is resets cleared and we want to find the details of Felix click on this and I want everything to appear in here so to achieve that I'm going to first for exit out and use cell click go back to the design view okay right in here let's go to data grid view select that make sure the data grid view is selected come right here to the properties and where we have cell click there i'm going to double click on that there we go and scroll right down so that you guys can see it properly so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use try cache try whatever error that i might run into take care of it for me so the cache statement is going to be exception ex there and that is going to be a message box column column show and what message ex dash message that takes care of an error message and in here now this is what I want the system to do start with the very first text box and that is txt student ID dot text that is equals my data grid view one In data grid I think that should be uppercase data grid view one dash select selected rows and the selected row will be zero say that cells and the very first array will start from zero then we want to grab the value value dots to string 
there and there we go that is the very first one the second one is going to be first name copy that and just paste it here we have first name surname okay so let's change these to one two three okay now here that is first name surname here here we have address there looking good now underneath here that's going to be CBO gender CBO gender in the case of gender everything else seems to be the same so grab all of this paste and this becomes number four right that is for gender then we have three more underneath there paste this is going to be DOB then we have mobile email and this is going to be five we have six here and seven there okay I'm now going to speed up the rest I'm just taking care of all of these so if I let me run it then you see what I'm talking about they have taken care of these very ones so if I go to my data review here now click on that there we go there you see so we need to take care of the others do nothing will appear in here because this is not in our database uh, so let's exit exit out and continue so let's speed that up there we go that is all guys that is it so have a look at it take it from the top and bring it down it's so all 39 in total there we go guys that is it there all done so I'm gonna save that compile and let's run run there guys so come right in here now and select there see that the only bit that was not populated was the details that is meant to be here we don't have anything in there okay it's not in the database and the result for the very first one there was no result for the very first one okay so let's reset or we can just add some value in here now okay so let's see if we can add value in there that was the very first one that I did earlier instead of highlighting that there should have been another way around there we go so I can add this but the primary key alright so let's if I click on this now it's going to be telling me of the primary key you see that duplication of keys only if I change the primary key because I say the primary key should be unique then we can get Tony Montana's details in there so let's say Tony Montana's dad is Santana Montana there and the address and that is this is San there we go so we can now click on add there and we are able to add that of Santana Montana straight onto the database as well that is it Santana Montana 
or Tony Montana. Okay, I'll come back into our database here, and that is it. We can refresh. Okay, so guys, now you've seen how to create your own student database management system in C. So I'm going to call it the end of this beautiful tutorial and please do subscribe to my channel and you can also join to become a member of the channel you all have a nice day now and bye for now